hello you guys welcome back to another week of kenya has thoughts where kenya sits at her desk and she tells you her thoughts for a good 20 minutes so i do have thoughts on things and so we can just hop right on into them the florida board of education has decided that they are going to teach during black history month that slavery was bad but slaves also gained things out of being enslaved like they were able to use some of the skills that they learned to go on and help them in their regular life and i'm just here to call out the motherfucking bullshit um slavery did not help black people slavery did not help black people black people are not better off because they were slaves black people were not were not sent to all different type of countries to live better lives slaves were not hired help slaves were being tortured slaves were being tortured that is what it was and we need to continue to talk about that but that brings me to my point because i always say things just don't happen overnight things are always a series of events and that's how you get to where we are i want to talk about people specifically my people sometimes not wanting people to talk about slavery anymore you have conspiracy theorists who like to say that slavery never even happened slavery was something the government made up and said happened to make black people feel like they were always inferior and i'm just like huh you don't see how anti-black that conspiracy theory is you're so ashamed of slavery you're so ashamed of your ancestors and you feel like it's a failing of black people that they were slaves that you come up with some weird conspiracy theory that literally can be debunked like there are people who are still alive i have a grandmother who was in her 90s who would know people who were enslaved who would remember what slavery was and the people who were casualties in slavery and the stuff that has happened and the way black people have been treated because of slavery and so you just can't say things like that because like history there are people who do the job of making sure harriet tubman literally has interviews harriet tubman has interviews like i don't know what to tell you like so that just simply can't be true, but you hate blackness so much and you hate what black people are so bad that you would come up with this conspiracy theory because you're trying to prove that like black people was kings. Like it's just ridiculousness. And then you also have the people who do this weird thing whenever a slave movie comes out, which slave movies do not come out that often because that's another thing that pisses me off. People are like, all we get is fucking slave movies. And no, you don't, no, you don't No, Simply that just the numbers do not show that the numbers Numbers do not show that all black people get a slave movie. Slave movies rarely come out. They just rarely come out. I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, <laughs> whenever it happens, someone puts out a slave movie. Barry Jenkins puts out the Underground Railroad, which is absolutely brilliant. Go watch it. It's a limited series on Amazon Prime. Anyways, whenever that happens, people will be like, I'm sick of talking about slavery. Black people are more than just slavery. We get it. We get it. And there's two reasons why that bothers me. Number one, that always comes from someone who's already a fucking dumbass. Like, you don't know everything about slavery because you're already dumb. <laughs> you already didn't listen in school. So, like, I can't believe that. And also, slavery went on for so long and so many things happened to black people during slavery. It's impossible for you to know everything that has gone on in slavery we can always learn more about slavery we can always learn more about what happened to black people and number two we should always be reminded about slavery we should never forget what happened to black people we should never forget the work of white supremacy we should never forget what this country i live in and many countries that you live in are built on we should never forget that and that's why i will never sit up online and be like we shouldn't have slave movies can we we've had enough of slavery can like no i will say i will always be like black people deserve obviously an entire array of representation in an array of media an array of movies tv shows books obviously but i will never sit up here and be like nope slave movies chop because when you get that when you get people 
who sit up here and already you don't want to talk about slavery. Imagine what the people who are literally descendants of the slavers are going to do. What do you think the descendants of the slavers are going to do? They're going to be like, wait, they don't want to talk about slavery anyway. We definitely don't want to talk about slavery because it makes us look fucking terrible. So let's just change the history books. Do you see? You see the series of events? You see? So if you as a black person aren't even going to fight for us to acknowledge slavery, talk about slavery, continue to talk about slavery, and continue to uncover the bullshit that has happened to our people, what you think the other side is going to do? What you think the other side is going to do? And that's what it disgusts me, honestly. It disgusts me, honestly, when I hear certain black people talk about slavery. Like, disgust me. Because I'm just like, you don't know enough about slavery. You don't. Number one, you're dumb. And two, because you to say something like that, you already have to be dumb. And two, it's just like, I, no one knows enough about slavery. No one who's as young as us would. There always can be more. There always can be more. There always should be more. There are people who didn't know Harriet Tubman had a husband. Yeah, yeah. There's people who didn't know Harriet Tubman had a husband. So you mean to tell me there's like, you can't learn more? You can't learn. There, there were so many slaves who we do not know, who we do not know their stories. It should be a group effort for everyone to be trying to uncover as much as we can about slavery, trying to keep the stories of enslaved people alive, and then talking about how enslavement has affected black people in today. Yeah, yeah, there should be more stories. We, you, Sorry, yes, I believe you should be drowned with slave media. So we can continue to talk about it. Because then, you, because if you don't, you get what's happening in Florida. It's not a, I hate this like thing that people do where they believe like it's a push and a pull. Like, ooh, if we get black movies about, you know, black people having fun, then we can't get slave movies. Like they can all happen at the same time. That's the thing. You're always used to your cup always having to be half empty. Like they both can happen. We can demand both. We can have slave movies and we can also have fun movies. Like they, they, both of those things can happen. Stop making, like, stop being like, ooh, I don't want none of this because that's what, you get this bullshit. You get this bullshit. Now I'm not blaming black people for the bullshit. <laughs> I just, it's just nasty. It's just nasty to see like how people continue to belittle black people and how little people care about black people who lived before us and what black people have gone through. And it just all connects. It just all connects. Anyways, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Y'all make me sick. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, hmm, I saw Barbie. I saw Barbie. Um, I might be starting a Ryan Gosling Oscar campaign. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm a little booked and busy. So stay with me. Stay with me. You guys know I am the number one Ryan Gosling stand. Like, so I might be doing that. But that in America, America Ferreira, like mm, she ate too. But anyway, that's not the point of actually what I came to talk about Barbie. Um, yeah. All right, folks, y'all just gonna have to hang it up. It gets to a point when it comes to the Little Mermaid, Black Panther, uh, Spider-Verse, Barbie, and any other fucking movie that comes out. I remember y'all were mad at the, like the new Jurassic Park movie too. I think y'all got mad about the Transformers movie too. Yeah, y'all are just trying to find shit to be mad at. And I get it. A bunch of you guys watch a bunch of content and media and TV shows and news stations that just put all of this negative bullshit into your face all the time. Oh, they're attacking us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're attacking us. Feminine. Oh, y'all, y'all get all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to use your big brain and you're going to have to use the sense God gave you to be like, Hmm, maybe this is stupid. Maybe I shouldn't be mad at a Barbie mu movie for promoting feminism. Maybe I shouldn't be mad at a Barbie movie for saying patriarchy is bad. Maybe I should go deal with real fucking problems. That's the part that be getting me. Whatever your funky ass beliefs are, whatever. At what point does it become unserious? At what point is it like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be mad at a movie. <laughs> when does it become I shouldn't be mad at a movie? When does it become like 
I have nothing to actually complain about. So I am literally complaining about anything. That's what it's becoming, complaining about anything. And then I don't see how you people who take in this media don't see the grift that the people who are telling you this stuff is bad, the people who create the content and are constantly like, whoa, 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 you guys need to be worried about this, worried about this. How you don't see how they're grifting. They are literally appealing to you, like you to get you angry. They act like they care about this stuff because they know you do. They're trying to get you angry because it's profitable for them. How do you not see the game they running on you? How do you, the people who sit up there every time a movie comes out and there's black people in it or women in it <laughs> and they put up this content like Hollywood has gone woke. They are coming for our kids. When they put up this content, how you don't see that shoot a fool? How you don't see that they're 100% making money off of your anger, off of your stupidity? They're banking on your stupidity. They've had found a way to literally like come up off of the fact that they can just make you upset. <laughs> That's it. And y'all don't even see it because it's a fucking movie. They realize that they're upset at a Barbie movie. They can make money off of you. What does that say? Y'all got to wake up. Like at what point do you, like I can't help y'all, but at what point do you, like can I, can help me help you? <laughs> when does it become, can I help you? Like why don't you see the game being ran on you? We can move on. Let's move on to the girls are getting divorced. I feel like everybody and they mama have been getting divorced this summer. Like it is just divorce season. But when you really think about it, when it comes to heterosexual couples, there's just been a bunch of bad PR lately. Like every single day, a heterosexual couple comes out and does something fucking foolish. Like something fucking foolish happens with a heterosexual couple. And you sit here and you're just like, Hmm. Hmm. What's going on? What's going on? What's in the milk? What's in the milk? What's in the water? Something ain't right. But baby, everybody in a mama got divorced. And the reason why I come up here to say this is more power to them. More power to them. I think it is so crazy that oftentimes, specifically women, are told to stay in like funky ass relationships just to have a funky ass relationship, to just have a man for the sake of having a man. There is something inside of me that just, it brings me almost so much joy. <laughs> When I see women hop from relationship to relationship or divorce to divorce, cause it's just like, yes, leave at the first sign of unhappiness. Life is too short to be so fucking unhappy. It sucks because I think we see famous people get divorced all the time. And then you got regular degular people being like, why can't they work it out? Like it was when Tia, when Tia was saying how she broke up with her husband, they got a divorce because like it just wasn't working. Like no one cheated on anyone. There wasn't no big scandal. It was just like, baby, I'm not happy. And then you had a bunch of people who don't got Tia money sitting up here like, now why would you divorce that man if he didn't do nothing? Why would you? And it's just like, you got to stay in a miserable relationship because you don't got no money and nothing else going for you. She don't. <laughs> she don't. And the thing is, if more regular degular women had resources, you would see more regular degular women, one, not feeling like they need to get married and two, leaving marriages that don't fulfill them. Like that's what it is. You're seeing women with resources and choices and careers and other things going on, realizing marriage is just not the mountaintop. Like what did Prince say? I've been to the mountaintop and it ain't what they said. Like it's just not everything. It's not every, like at the end of the day, you're going to have to have more than a relationship and proving to other people you can have a man to be happy. And that's what these people who have resources, money, jobs, other things, are able to do. So what really we should be fighting for is regular degla women to get out of their terrible relationships. Like that's the thing. That's why you will never ever hear me be like, oh, when somebody gets a divorce, because if the marriage was happy, why the fuck would they be getting divorced? Clearly something has happened in their marriage that I don't know nothing about. So it's like, yay, congratulations. Y'all had decided to move the hell on. Like that's so you will never hear no awes from me, no tears from me when the girls decide to move on. You got to stay in a funky relationship. These girls don't. And I hope one day you don't. And I hope one day you don't. I hope one day you're able to be like, you know what? If this thing does not make me happy, be anymore. I shouldn't be here anymore because you can find happiness in anything. That's the thing. Relationship may not have to be the thing that brings you joy. Maybe it's other things, friends, kids, 
career, hobbies, maybe other things bring you. Like, it just doesn't have to be anything. And this idea that we literally browbeat into people, that relationships have to be everything, is why people stay in relationships that are literally sucking them dry, that are literally killing them, that are literally draining them of all their happiness. So when the girls get divorced, I'd be like, I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right because like, oh my gosh, life is far. I haven't even lived that long. And I'd be sitting up here like, ooh, life too short to be miserable. Life is just too short to be miserable. And then life is also too short to be miserable and somebody else causing your misery. Because the thing is, I could be miserable by myself. It's one thing to cause your own misery. What's, I saw that tweet that said, don't let nobody ruin your day, ruin it yourself. And ain't that the goddamn truth? I can ruin my own damn day. <laughs> I can do all types of things to ruin my own damn day. I don't need somebody else to do it. I don't, I refuse to let somebody else ruin my day. I can do that on my own. I can do that on my own. So seek happiness, seek some goddamn joy. The next thing I want to move on to is like, why do y'all hate black women? Okay, so every time a new black girl and I mean unambiguously black like black around the way girl gets to popping there will always be a tweet that says she not even that cute she don't even look that good somebody's gonna compare her to a man um people are just gonna be really um y'all gotta seek help there are a group of people on the internet who direct vitriol and hate towards black women simply because a black woman doesn't hate herself. Because you wake up every morning and you hate yourself, you want black women to wake up every morning and hate themselves. And when they don't, when they live loudly, when they live freely, when they live unapologetically, and when the world is giving them flowers, when you're seeing them get success, you feel like you have to bring them down a peg. You have to tell everyone like, Y'all do know she ugly, right? And it's just like, no, you're ugly. <laughs> you wake up every morning and say you're ugly. You look at yourself in the mirror and think you're ugly. And you're projecting that onto us and you're projecting it onto this woman who ain't done shit to nobody. You don't feel good about yourself because the world hasn't treated you kind. It's not like I don't get it. The world hasn't treated you kindly. And so you want everyone to treat this girl just as unkindly as you feel like you've been treated. But it's just like, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work and you're gonna have to go to therapy. You're gonna have to go to therapy and you're gonna have to work on some self-love. I don't like it. I do not like it when a regular black girl comes up, because at the end of the day, these people who y'all are calling ugly and all types of names and stuff, they're not even like, what, what would their looks even have to do with the fact that they either own TV shows, movies, um, and, and making music? That They looks don't even have shit to do with any of those things. So it's the fact that you believe black women are only valuable if in some way you find them attractive. If in some way you find them to be a sex symbol. You don't think that's weird? You don't think that's weird? And then it don't take into the fact that the girls y'all call it ugly don't even be ugly. If they don't even be ugly, you ask what's ugly about them and they stuttering over their words. Say say something about her that's ugly without being anti-black. You can't. You can't. You're lying. You're lying. And it's just the fact that you hate, like, yourself. You wake up every morning and hate yourself. And I'm not going to let y'all do it. I'm not going to let y'all do it. I don't like it. I don't like it. It happens every single time someone. But y'all did it to Meg. Y'all did it to me. It's just like, y'all don't think she built kind of this. Y'all don't think, y'all don't think. It's like, no, you the only one thinking that. You the only one looking at the pictures and picking it apart. Because that says everything how you feel about yourself. How you feel about yourself. You wake up every single morning and pick yourself apart. So when you get online, you already know what ammunition to use. Seek help. Seek help. <laughs> Next person on the docket is Drake. How come every time somebody pop in, here come Draco light skin ass trying to be close to them? I'm tired of Drake. Ooh, I'm tired of Drake. I don't got nothing to say about Drake. Uh, next thing I want to discuss is female rap. I'm going to say something that I don't even want to elaborate all too much. Okay, how come is it? That female rap is like it right now. Everyone is talking about female rap. Every time a female rap drop, like drop on a remix, they put out a new song. It's talk, 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 talk. Everybody feel it. Everybody love it. And so 
the men, the men who have radio shows, the men who don't have radio shows, the men who have podcasts, they all get to talking about female rap and everything that is wrong with female rap. And all female rappers do is talk about the same shit and y'all need to figure something else out. And it's just like, have you looked around at male rap? Have you looked around at the sound of male rap, the hottest male rappers? They all work with each other. They all make music that sound the same. They all have the same exact flows. They all doing the same exact thing. They all dress exactly the fucking same. They all talk about the same goddamn shit. shit and y'all say absolutely nothing. Y'all say absolutely nothing. I don't even say nothing because some of the shit I like, y'all don't say anything because you're just like, whatever. And if someone dares to say someone is whack, Someone is whack and someone sucks. Y'all just like, ooh, y'all don't know. I don't know. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. But y'all allowed to have all types of opinions on what the women are doing. Or what the women are doing. You just sound like a hater. You just sound, you are a misogynist. And you sound like a hater. You just let... Men do whatever they want in rap. And that's the re that's the reason why the tickets ain't selling. That's the reason why the tickets ain't selling. Because the shit they doing is boring. It's boring. Don't nobody want to see that. But then, the women, you have all types of rules as to what they should be doing. But the thing is, if the women wasn't popping, you wouldn't be saying nothing. If the women wasn't popping, you wouldn't be saying nothing. You wouldn't be saying anything. All of a sudden, you want the girls to be making woke rap. All of a sudden, you want the social justice raps. That's what you want from the girls. And it's just like, but you don't ask that of the men's. And then the thing is, there are girls who are making that type of rap, but you don't care about them. You don't care about them. You want the girls who are popping to make that type of rap. Instead of just going to the girls who are making that type of rap. But in, when it comes to the men, you go to the men who make the type of rap you want, and then you let the men who aren't making the type of rap you like do what they do. You would never sit up on your radio stations or your podcasts and sit there and berate the little babies of the world or the dirks of the world. You would never because you know they're going to come up there. And so you would never do that. But when it comes to the girls, you got all this mouth. You got all this mouth when it comes to the girls and what they doing. I don't like it. I don't like it. Y'all are misogynist. I don't like it because that's all that is. You have no problem when the men's rapping about all the same stuff. But when the girl's doing it, you got something to say. It's like, it's, it's just not for you then. It's just not for you then. Move on. Move on. And then there's plenty of girls who are rapping the raps you want to hear. So go listen to those. But that's not the point. The point is you want to humble the other girls. That's what you're doing it for. You're not low. I have a theory. I can win the lottery. So the lottery was like, whatever. <laughs> I don't know anything about the lottery. Every now and then, y'all will post something be that the lottery is up to 600 million. And I'm just like, there's a lottery. Like, what are the lotteries? Every time I go to the gas station, I don't even know what to play. Like, who, 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 which lottery is what? I've never played the lottery in my goddamn life. But boy, do I have a theory. You want to know what that theory is? I could win the lottery. I could win the lottery, do you? And do you think I'm joking when I say this? But... I am so serious. I am a firm believer. If I played the lottery, I would win. I would win. I genuinely believe it. The thing is, I you would ask him, then why don't you do it? Because then I'd be too powerful. <laughs> I would then be too powerful. If I said, I believe I could win the lottery. I said this on my Patreon one time. The reason why I believe I could win the lottery is because really good things always happen to me and really bad things always happen to me. My life always exists on two extremes. Either I'm real up or I'm real down. Rarely in my life has there ever been a middle in my life. And I think it's just the type of person I am. I'm just a very like passionate person and everything I do, I like put my all into. So like, I'm only going to exist on two extremes. Like it's never gonna be like just this like, oh, I'm just in the middle, just in the, let's just, this is never me. This is never me. My, whatever opinion I have, I feel it fully. Anything that I hate, I hate it fully. Anything I love, I love fully. And so I say that to say really good things happen to me and really bad things happen to me. And therefore, the reason why 
I always am like scary about things. Like I'm scared of like, ooh, my plane's gonna go down, train's gonna crash, car's gonna crash. It's because like really bad things also could happen to me. Like bad things could happen to me. And then at the same time, it's like, I could win the lottery. I genuinely believe, like when I see people who win the lottery and stuff, they're like, this person just won $700 million. I'm like, that could be me. That could be me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being me, you know, I just am not, I don't know, I don't know. And it's also the reason why, like, I'm, like, foolishly delusional. Like, I live on this idea of, like, I can do, like, anything. Like, I am delusional about so many, I see someone doing something, and I'm just like, hmm, I could do that. I could do that. And I don't know, it, I don't know, it's the reason why I'm, like, also ambitious. I don't know what that is, but every time the lottery comes around, I'm be like, these hoes just lucky I didn't play. These hoes just lucky I didn't play because I could win the lot. Every time I go to Vegas, I'm just like, mm, what Bruno Mars said. I'm about to buy Las Vegas after this roll. I'm going to buy Las Vegas once I get out of here. Like, I am go like, I'm about to run it up. But the thing is, I don't know how to, like, do any of that. <laughs> I don't know how to gamble. I don't know. I'm an extremely lucky person. But then when I get in an unlucky spell, I'm extremely unlucky. So whenever the lottery goes around, I'm just like, you hoes better be lucky. I don't know how to play the lottery. You hoes better be lucky. Number one, I don't go into gas stations. And number two, I, I don't know how to play the lottery. <laughs> I was literally telling my grandma this. I don't know how to play the lottery. <laughs> like, how do you play the lottery? And my grandma said she didn't know how to play the lottery either. So we both was just looking at each other silly. Like, mm, okay, maybe this, maybe next round. Next round, we got it. Next round, we got it. Also, did y'all see that video of that black lady, like, claiming she won the lottery? I don't know if she did or not, but I think she did it. And, like, she was carrying on in the store. She's kind of my hero. She's kind of my hero. Uh, next thing we need to, to discuss is block people. That's what I'm going to leave you guys on. Block people. Whenever you see someone making content about how black women are undesirable, block them. Whenever you see a bigot being a bigot, block them. Whenever you see someone being racist, block them. Don't quote tweet them. Don't try to dunk on them. Don't try to get your lick back. Don't try to stitch their video. Don't, 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 don't. Because we live in the day and age where interaction is currency. What did I tell you at the top of the video? How these alt-right people are 100% playing into the fact that these people will watch them. They're, they're telling the people who watch them anything they know they want to hear because all they need is the clicks. They're grifting. They don't even care if they believe what they believe. It's just about getting people to click. So when you y'all be quote y'all be quote tweeting people into millions of dollars, y'all be stitching people videos into millions of dollars, hate watching people videos into millions of dollars, commenting on people videos into millions of dollars, block them and go. Block them and go. And then number two, why ruin somebody else's day? Well, y'all be quote tweeting people and stuff. It's like, why you came and ruined my day? <laughs> why did you have to ruin my day with this bullshit? I would have been none the wiser that this person exists. But now you don't quote tweeting them and now you don't ruin my day too. So for me, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways, that is the end of this Kenya Has Thoughts. I will see you guys next week. Peace.